So here at November Project, we do this thing where I say good morning, you say good morning back, I ask you if you're good, and the only proper answer is yeah. I don't really care if you're injured, if your butt hurts, if you didn't sleep well last night, the only proper answer is yeah. But since we can't yell before 7 a.m., we're gonna do that quietly. You're gonna yell really loud, but you're gonna whisper. Does it make sense? All right, let's practice. Good morning. Good morning. That was lame. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful. Good. The intensity is why many runners call the free fitness movement November Project home. Of those, Molly Musevic channels the same intensity to recover from a hamstring injury suffered in a bar class between training for her first and second half marathons. The way I was doing the workouts just wasn't correct. So my muscles were overcompensating and pulled my hamstring just basically because it was overwork. And so then I was out probably four or five months because of that. Molly joined the recent surge of runners signing up for their first half marathon and taking a conservative plan into training. I never thought of myself as a runner. I never thought I could do distance. And then I had a coworker who also just wanted to get back into running. I was like, you know, I'll sign up for this if you do. And I was like, all right, I'm in. Running seems to be the most natural sport. All you need is an open path. But natural stops a few miles into that run. An injury risk sets in quickly if you don't train correctly. Some people just say, you know, I want to be a runner, and I have friends who run, and they go out and they run three or five miles a week, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to run three or five miles a week. That's not the way to go about it. Each time a runner's foot hits the pavement, the bones, muscles, and joints feel shocked at seven to eight times the runner's body weight. They haven't preconditioned themselves properly for that stress that's on the body. When a person is training for 13.1 or 26.2 miles, that stress is much more and can cause some things to break down. The great thing about running is practically anyone can do it, but with growing popularity of long distance races like half marathons and marathons, it's important for beginning runners to understand some simple ways that they can help themselves prevent injury. One easy thing, just hit a different running trail every once in a while. One of the objectives to running efficiently is shock attenuation. You can do it by running on a softer surface, so a lot of people in Boston run on trails you'll see these paths that go alongside the roadway and you wonder why is that? How did that develop? Because people like running on dirt. It does attenuate the shock. Dr. Velsman added running in the correct shoes for your stride and also slowly building your training as ways that runners can prevent injury. Training for long distance races requires focus and intensity though, which Molly embraced. At the time I lived in Back Bay and so I'd go to the Charles River Path and knew that if I went out five miles I had to come back five miles and there's no other way to come back. I made it so I couldn't, you know, go easy on myself. It's just that, that same intensity and repetition is what can lead to injury. Pull your belly in and lift back up. And release. Lift. Lower. Two more. The runners that come to Yoga for Runners here at North End, my goal is to give them some tools to take away with them um, so that they don't necessarily need a 75 minute yoga class or even a mat to, to bring some of the stretches or the tools that they've learned over the five week series. So roll your feet out a few times and we'll get your ball in a second. Right. Some people do a great job with stretching. Most runners have you know, a routine of stretches that they do. But uh, flexibility issues are probably the primary impairment that we identify when a, a runner comes in with an injury. And that becomes instantly a priority in their treatment plan. The Yoga for Runners workshop shows runners how to use yoga for stretching and even more importantly shows them how to be more aware of their bodies and thus attuned to the mechanics of how they run. Pick up all ten toes and lift the inner arch of your foot. So if you are someone who the outer edge is really worn on your shoes, you probably, I'm exaggerating, but are really pronating like that. So you wanna make sure that you're bringing the inner arch down, but finding that lift in your feet. As runners sometimes focus more on aerobic exercise, lower stress activities like yoga can be overlooked as helpful cross training and injury prevention. In those off days when you're not running, you do need to condition the cardiovascular system, so you need to do something that will do that but not give you the same stress from running. So typically the elliptical machine is a great thing for people to do. Biking, you can do that indoors or outside, and swimming. Training for her first half marathon, Molly incorporated some cross training, but only learned the importance of stretching and body mechanics after her injury. The other thing too is you roll out the fascia on the bottom of your foot, the fascia is connected to like everything up your leg. 
So especially people who like have issues with being too tight or can't touch their toes, then if you roll out your fascia, then you can get like further to the floor by a solid couple inches. With her injury, Molly experienced the unique psychological effects that some runners get when injured and running becomes off limits. I think it's one of the most frustrating injuries to have because I can't run while it's like, well, I can't really bike or elliptical or anything else either because it's my hamstring and any of those could overwork it. So it's like, you just need to rest. And I haven't rested since I was a little kid because I was always playing something. And so to like stop and tell myself like, all right, you have to take a break was really hard. Injuries can stop a runner from running short term or long term, depending on if the injury is severe or recurring. Either are typically a runner's worst fear. The first thing we have to do is identify whether what they're experiencing is dangerous and damaging to their body. In many cases it isn't. In the worst case scenarios, we have to say, okay, you need to stop running for a week or, or two. We'll decide, how, you know, depending on the severity of the injury will put it on hold for a little while with a plan to immediately get back to doing that. Because of the desired immediacy of returning to running after an injury, many runners turn to alternative medicine for injury prevention, maintenance, and recovery. The needles themselves, don't you don't typically feel them when they go in. It's just like a slight little prick or whatever. But injuries definitely aren't reserved for the inexperienced. Maddie's an elite runner who's also experienced being sidelined with an overuse injury. What most people don't understand about acupuncture is that is acupuncture, you generally treat the actual root of the underlying problem first before to help take care of the actual local symptom. I've got back-to-back -back marathons coming up and I'm training for a 100 miler, I'm training for a 50 miler and people look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> the secret of acupuncture is that you're inserting it through the skin so you can actually intrude it deep into the area where the muscle is being affected to actually get more blood flow to that area. But also to help actually reset those muscles when it's tight where you can needle into a certain area of the muscle and cause the muscle to actually twitch and, and release itself to loosen it up. When I was looking for someone to fix my, my IT band issue, I came here and Probably within a couple of months, I saw a big improvement and was able to make it through both marathons and went, in, went into my fall season like racing really well. Like Maddie, some people can train for ultra marathons, have a tune-up, and be fine with proper care. People's bodies can adapt to the stress of running to be able to run 26.2 miles. So people can certainly adapt to shorter runs, but it's important to keep one key thing in mind. No two human beings are exactly the same. Each person has to determine the best training, maintenance, and injury prevention for their running mechanics. There's a lot that I've learned that I didn't know when I started about running, and so I feel like you know, for the next one that I train for, I will prepare for it a lot differently than the first one. But at the end of the day, be it training for a race or coming back from an injury, for most runners, you don't have to go the road alone. Having running buddies is fantastic, like especially Friday Hills. One, I would never run hills on my own. There's no way. If you told me to go run a hill, I'd be like, nope, why would I do that? But now it's like, oh, now I have friends to run hills with. It pushes you to try a little harder, but it, you can scale it back. You can make it more intense. You can add spice. You can kind of make it your own workout. It's kind of the best of all worlds. Reporting with BU News Service, I'm Ashley Davis.